Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. She's not a Christian! Give it up, y'all. Your portal to the paranormal, esoteric, and all things spiritual. She's tampering and doubt sad and stuff! And now, your host, Truth Seeker. Yes, you've heard the man. Your host, Truth Seeker. Truth Seeker Podcast. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Excited and delighted to be with you guys again today with another beautiful show of the Truth Seeker Podcast, a show where we cover all things spiritual. We look into the esoteric, philosophical, the mysterious, the hidden realms of the occult, all of this stuff. And and you find out that that stuff's not so occultic anymore because it's not hidden. We talk about it in the light. We bring it into the light. And if it can stand in the light, then hey, we'll apply it to our lives. And uh, everybody has a piece of the puzzle. Bring us something to the table. Got an awesome guest lined up for you guys today. Was on his show a couple weeks ago. It was awesome. Had a great conversation. Uh, but first, I want to say a huge uh, thank you to everybody who makes this show possible. This show, this podcast, whatever this is or whatever this has become or is becoming is not possible without your support. So thank you guys for supporting my work via Patreon. You don't know um, what you... Uh, uh, have created here it's not possible without you so especially man starting a new year moving forward uh just did a 2019 recap video um of a lot of the things that i was able to create to produce some of the episodes and things like that just an overview um and none of that was possible without your help and support so thank you guys there's a a few people doing a lot and you guys are a part of the tribe and community what we're building here so uh, thank you guys for that if you'd like to support Moving forward, 2020, go to patreon.com backslash truth seeker. There you get access to my entire discography of music, which is like 200 plus songs instantly for $5. You get access to all of that. You also get access to our Thursday night School of the Mystics, which is the community aspect to what we're building here. Our Discord server where we hang out and chat throughout the day, every day. Um, my meditations are on there a bunch of really cool stuff behind the scenes i'm continuing to add to it make sure you check it out patreon.com backslash true seeker with that being said i'm also releasing a new song uh tonight will be on patreon you get free uh you get access to that to download the mp3 as soon as it goes live uh january the first midnight tonight it's going live so you'll be able to get that in your inbox so check that out haven't uh done any songs in a couple months so and this one is a little bit different it's a motivational song uh i think the timing in the release of this motivation about um desire manifestation bringing things into reality working with god and uh some of those things so uh it's a different type of track it's more uh, aggressive a lot of people are saying they don't like my whispering laid back style they don't like that kind of style of rap anymore they like my my crunk yelling <laughs> rap so i'm gonna try to do some of that uh just just messing around having fun but that track will be available at midnight so make sure you check that out on patreon 
Um, also, quick thank you to everybody who's made this book a success, Spirit Realm. Uh, it is over two months old now and, um, man, still making its rounds and you guys are still purchasing it. Thank you guys for all the support. If you haven't picked up a copy, go to Amazon, Spirit Realm, Angels, Demons, Spirits, and the Sovereignty of God, forward by Jordan Maxwell. Check it out. Get you a copy there. Uh, so, yeah, that's the news. And uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into today's podcast, bring my guest on, Keith Anchin, Anthony Bla- Blanchard. Blanchard, how you doing, brother? Welcome to the show. Thank you, my dear friend, for having me. I love the room you've got behind you, man. That's just, re- I love the vibe, dude. Ambiance, man. That's what it's about. Yeah, it's all about the ambiance, right? Purples <laughs> and blues and beautiful colors. Oh, yeah. How Thank are you, Thank you for man? having me. I'm good, man. You had a good Christmas? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally did, man. The, the family was blessed. Got to hang out together and see the smiles and uh, things on my family's face when they opened their presents that they didn't know they th- they were getting. Watched a bunch of uh, episodes of The Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. I don't know if you've checked that out yet. <laughs> That's the new gig, right? Right. You know, I, I've only said, you know, there's only one thing better than being a kid at Christmas is being the parent of a kid at Christmas. Right. Yeah. It's better to give than to receive. <laughs> yeah. Especially to uh, your seed. Yeah. Your offshoot. For sure, uh-huh. man. Um, talk a little bit about what you do, bro. You have your own uh, podcast, radio show. You go live on Facebook. A lot of people tuning in, uh, doing a lot of stuff with music and things like that. So for people in my audience who don't know who you are and what you bring to the table, just kind of give them a quick overview right quick. Introduce yourself. I'm a full-time musician here in Memphis, Tennessee. I've been doing it for years. I play with world-class players, people we've heard music from. Uh, on the radio for years. So I, somehow I moved from South Louisiana into the Memphis scene and was sort of grandfathered in the click. I mean, you gotta, you gotta earn your dues. And I paid my dues, but I got in. And I, so I'm able to do that. And I, my spiritual music, Lavender Soul, is a band comprised of members of the Memphis Symphony Orchestra, Bernard Dissec, the singer, and myself. We write this music. It's like a cross between... Anya, Zeppelin, and Enigma, and we have a, it's very symphonic, it's very ambient, I love that, but spiritually, as far as my speaking, my my word, um, I've been doing Center of Light Radio for about nine and almost ten years, um, I've achieved a very large listening audience, um, and then the radio company I was with, they went dark, so I started this on my own. But as far as my books and my teachings, it's about empowering the individual. It's kind of like there are none, but if we can use the idea of creating a shortcut to experience whatever that thing is (laughs) that we're all wanting. Because it gives someone something palpable. Oh, my God. Is that what that is? I want some of that. So I have a way about me. I've been blessed with this gift of putting a person in a situation to be able to look at it honestly and get what they think it is out of the way. And in so doing, they're able to see something very tangible and they want more of it. And it's truly that easy because when we approach such situations in life, expecting it to be difficult simply right in front of your face, it just becomes this mountain is arduous task. So my gig is empowering people so they can, become a walking sobbing blissful mess of infinite possibility oh yeah which they already are they might not know it (laughs) but it's to show them the possibilities i mean that's the whole thing when you're you're speaking i'm thinking of you know the uh the scripture says to let your light shine before men and to like embody your testimony tell people where you are what because it lets them know God is not a respecter of persons like what's what's available for you and what you've accomplished. They can do it, too. That's what a testimony does. Let's know. Hey, I did it. Here's how I did it. It's up to you. Twenty four hours in a day. Let's make it happen. And so all of this stuff is is, is attainable. That's the beautiful thing that other people can can do that. And then I'm sure you've seen I've totally seen which it kind of motivates me people in your community, people have been hanging out friends and family starting to listen to what you're doing starting to embody the uh, the podcasts and the teachings and things like that. And then they start stepping out 
applying some of these principles and things to their life, right? And they start changing their life and stepping out spiritually and, and becoming more, you know what I'm saying, well-rounded and things like that. Have you seen that as well? I live for it. I live for looking for it. And it validates itself. Something I've done, something you've done. When you came on my show and I said, during the break, bro, and Don, I said, don't you have a piece of music? And you sent me that piece of music. And I see the ripple effect. I see the wave of liquid light as it changes people when they hear something new with my music, with my books, your books. I was just simply wowed by your, the creation of the cover that, of your book that you and I talked about in the <laughs> radio sure, green room. Tr truly, bro, that is one of the best looking book covers, not only in art form, to fit the mess. Yes, it is so imbued with darkness but the light is coming from within and the darkness, you know, dissipates, the, it consumes the darkness. And so, and it's very well conveyed in that way. Man, I tell you what, um, and, and not to, you know, toot my own horn, but it, feel, it feels like I'm holding like a, a relic. Uh, somebody in chat it looks who is like a relic. There's somebody in chat, my brother John Santiago, he's in chat, and he's in Memphis too. He has his own podcast and stuff as well. What's up, but Santiago? He actually uh, ordered a copy, and then he got it out the mail, and he's like, I can feel it vibrating in my hands. Like, it's crazy, man. Like, it really, like, a lot of people want to get the audio version and, and get the, uh, the PDF, but there's something different about tangibly holding it in your hands and having it. Like, I've got books from, like, the 1800s from spiritual and religious leaders and stuff that you can feel like, man, this is this is old. This has been, there's some wisdom here. And then you, you're holding it in your hand. It's There's a different experience when it comes to that, right? Completely, bro. I know exactly what you're saying because when I work on a book, the first one took me eight years. The first year was in meditation, speaking with higher self, God, Jesus, whatever, whatever person wants to call it. <laughs> Whatever that thing is that that is the it, what I want at least. And after a year, it said, "No more. Go live what you learned. Make it concrete within yourself. That way, you stand on truly solid ground versus parroting something." And so, after all those years, my second book took fourteen. So the point is, when you put all this, this, to something that is so valuable, it means something to you that if it takes a thousand years, I'm already starting my step, right? And when it finally comes into a space of expansion and fruition, validation, as a child, as an offspring of yours, the birth of that, when you open that box, did you feel that energy? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a creature. It's alive. Yeah. <laughs> it's a sentient being. Yeah, I feel it all the time. And let me ask you about that real quick because I've got some comments and, you know, I, I, I welcome it, you know, but there's a lot of religious community who listen to this or, you know, and they have a lot to say. But it was one who we were talking about energy and there was a comment that said any mention of energy is a demonic spirit. And you just mentioned feeling the energy off of the books and feeling the energy. And then you said it's alive. What is that energy to you? To me, it's the life force, it's the pranayama, it's the Holy Spirit, it's the chi, it's the tachyon, it's the breath that animates all life, and you can feel it. What is it to you, and, and is, is there anything to be scared of when people mention energy when it comes to what you just mentioned about permeating off of that case of books? I'm going inside simply. Because my heart, which is the essence of who we all are at our core, at our center, God lives within the center of our being. Seek the kingdom of God within. God is omnipresent. If God is omnipresent, it is everywhere and everything. We use the dictionary to understand thought conveyed from one person to another. Omnipresent means present in all places at all times. And the only place it is not is in fear because God is the light. God is love. God is eternal. It cannot even, in fact, fear does not exist for it. So everywhere around us, when we are at a level of spiritual maturity to understand that if God is love, 
and all these beautiful divine qualities. We have to do the work that takes us to an exalted realm so we're able to identify, recognize, understand, and appreciate and bless this entire world with the level that is required and necessary to bring about the prophecy of heaven on earth. There is no other way. So when I see something through the eyes of love, feel something through the eyes of love, hear something with the ears of love, my experience is totally divine and beautiful. So when I look at these books and these people or whatever the word energy. So the very sun, scientists will tell you, radiates energy. Is it radiating demons? I mean, they're using words to, it's really, really just ignorance, honestly. It's what it is. It's just flat out ignorance. It's not a, it's not a demeaning. It's not a slander. The word ignorance in the dictionary has a definition. So what we do is educate ourselves by looking at things honestly, understanding, even calling on your deity. Come be with me in this time so I can understand clearly what other people are saying. Yeah. There's uh, things change, man, when you become a little bit more open minded and more inclusive and you listen instead of talking all the time and trying to convert people or be right or whatever the case is. And you just listen to people where they are and um, just I mean, and I, I respect where they are. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's not my even my goal to like convince that person out of their ignorance and hey this is what it is and if you don't get it then i lost or whatever the case is the goal is just to, to simply shine that light and you know what i'm saying and be that light and uh and, and call that light forward which is in every person like everybody has that ability to uh, radiate light and to, to shine bright and so uh people find that that light in different places and and um it's embodied at different times in their life and you know, I, we always talk about having to go through the darkness or go through uh, religion, even, you know what I'm saying, to have some type of uh, um, framework for that and what that means. But there's a t there comes a time where you kind of transcend that and it becomes this inward relationship, this connectivity to God, to the angels, to the demons, to all people and seeing everyone as a reflection of yourself and a reflection of God as well. And it's, there's a peace that comes with that, man. And I found it. And, it, and, I, and I fight to maintain it, <laughs> you know. Everything is light. Nothing could exist without light. Everything is light. People will say, well, you, in fact, people are like you, whoever you are, and taking in this message, you are light. You are radiating light. That's why people can see your physical body. If you didn't have it, <laughs> if you were not that, you would be invisible. You would just be invisible. So for me, no matter what the faith, the dogma, the teaching, the walk, the talk, the sect, the creed, the code, I want to be in such a space of spiritual ecstasy. Whatever that is that everyone is seeking, that the dark and evil doesn't even exist for me. I've exalted, to use the word, raised myself to a level of wanting to be so with my creator. I'm becoming unified with it in the form of a consciousness, the Christ consciousness that Jesus experienced and said, I'm your brother, follow me, I am the way. So if we truly want to embody any part of a deity in any religion that professes I am the way, meaning I am the way to the ultimate life to bring you back home to your divine parent. We have to truly walk and talk. Firemen don't just wake up and become firemen. They go to school and they do the work and they graduate to a space to where they are now of the acclimate of teacher, master, fireman, chef, musician, so forth and so on. That's awesome, man. You, you mentioned um, spiritual ecstasy. Like how do you... I know it's a state of being, like always. All you got to do is shift your focus, right? I know. And there's tools and things that we can do. We can burn incense. We can meditate. We can listen to music. What are some of the the beautiful ways that you do that when uh, when you're by yourself, like or with a group, maybe? You know, do you do you meditate? Do you do you chant? Do you put on music, tones, incense, 
plant medicines? Like, what did you do to really tap into that spiritual ecstasy and, and embody it into your life daily? Like once you encounter it, you and I are a lot in that way because I sit in this chair and I don't want to be anywhere else. I mean, I want to be in my chair. I want to create, I want to create a website. I want to create a video. I want to create a book. I want, I want to get that God creative energy moving in me so I can contribute to the world. Yeah. And get, have a little bit of fun in, in it, the process as well. As far as meditation, I don't meditate. I meditate. I do need to do more of it, but I do it now. I'm in the moment of just wanting to be in a space of spirit. I want it to drape me. I want it to consume me. I want to drink it. <laughs> I want to breathe it. I want to, I want to lose everything that I think I am in it. That's my intention as often as I possibly can. I'm with you. Um, being in the moment, uh, the whole creator thing, um, you are little gods. You are made in the image and likeness of God, you know? And so therefore there's an, there's this natural uh, essence within you to create, to be like your father, who is a creator, who created all of this kind of stuff. And he gives us tools and he gives us uh, the imagination and we create and we can create beautiful things. We can create bad things. We can create destruction. You know, we can bring people together. We can host events. We can create books and music and philosophy. But there's the other side, too, where we create destruction and disharmony and gossip and slander and tearing things apart. You know, the create the creator destroyer. Both of those energies are within us. But I feel like there's just like an ultimate form of worship again, man, when you create something and you can show people the book the song um the website you know the meditations the podcast this con beautiful conversation um it didn't exist before you created it and you have to sit down and meditate and say okay this is what we're doing we have to plan it all of the stuff that kind of comes into it and then we get to share it with the world you know and, and that feeling that we feel especially like the vibration and the essence that is captured within that book and the hard work and blood sweat and tears that went into it like the day I released it, I was just vibing high. I did a couple different uh, podcasts and they're like, how you feel? I was like, I feel really good. But I know tomorrow I have to maintain this because I, I, I know I feel good because I released this book and it's finally here and hard work pays off. And I'm still trying to keep that feeling and walk with it. God is excited to show off what he created. Staring at the stars, stay, gazing at the sun, looking at people and like just being in awe and wonder of everything that he's created and so the same feeling we're like hey what, what do you think what do you think man i love it the book is awesome it changed my life i feel energy when i hold it like i'm trying i'm trying to do that back to god gazing at the stars man just the awe and wonder what the hell is out there like i feel connected out there i know i'm going back there when i when my body go, goes into the earth and i ascend back to the stars like you know and just present and being present and just being thankful in the beauty and awe and creation of the book talks about it the sovereignty of god of how all of these things work together in unison man of like the the, the construct and the framework of of this reality man and being in awe and wonder of that and i think that that's a good way to approach life and spirituality art creativity is in awe and wonder of all things and to never lose that wonder that good feeling you and i have at least for me when anyone does something that you're creating or connecting and it's your thing, be it a musician drawing or for me, mine and you, yours is if we're connecting, if we're creating something in our life that can only come from the creator. So in that moment, we are truly having relationship with creator as we become the vessel. When you write, when you sing, I mean, in fact, whether you're doing a nine to five job in a cubicle and don't even <laughs> realize and you hate your job, you are vesseling an energy that is so f not this body. You walk up to a 98 degree sun, you'll say, wow, that's a hot temperature day. Well, you're down the road on the expressway in the distance, you see some trees. Look above the tree line about that far and just relax your gaze and you'll see an invisible duplicate of the entire tree line. Look up at a uh, blue sky when it's a nice clear day. 
you'll see individual units of, pho of photons everywhere, just floating around. So light is everywhere. And this is one very valuable thing that people can understand about spirituality or the laws of physics in a nutshell. Sound is what holds everything together. Light is the information and the forms in which things take. So light and sound are the two basic components that creates at least this part of our experience. So light is inherent, uh, information is inherent in light, and it defines, it gives shape, it gives detail, information, a formation of something taking form. And sound is what holds this reality together. So sound would be sort of like the empty space kind of thing. And light would give us form, something to look at. Yeah, when we want to know the secrets of the universe and just understand, kind of come together for me when I when I read it when I was younger. Um, it's talking about like if if we cease to praise the Father, then the rocks would cry out. And I always like pictured it like if humanity just kind of turned their back on God and quit praising or singing worship songs or whatever, that the rocks would literally like formulate mouths mouths and start singing. I don't know why, just exoteric, but like. When I study vibration, I understand that all of creation is vibrating and that vibrational resonance is them singing their worship song back to the creator. The rocks are already singing their song. The trees, the earth, the birds, the mountains, the seas, everything has a resonance of vibrational frequency that they're lifting up to the creator. And so we get to consciously join all of creation in a moment to lift up that same gratitude, thanksgiving that, hey, I'm here, I'm created. I have the ability and power to sing praise and, and sit in gratitude and be in awe and wonder for this creator. And then you, you find out how you just embody that gratitude, man. And that in and of itself for me, knowing it, lifting up a praise or sitting or chanting. That was beautifully said, dude. What a beautiful idea. When we resonate at our natural tone, which is humanity, unity, love, peace, fellowship, just, just being good people to everyone all the time, we return to our natural tone. And then therefore, we're singing our natural praise to nature, God, the, the supernatural, which is God. If God is not supernatural, I don't know what it is. So the idea of adding these negative connotations to words and ideas, that's all part of the illusion of the monkey mind that's in the head. This thing in the head that never shuts up. It's what we were taking in since the beginning, you know, what I was taught, what I put in, inflicted upon my own self. My lack of understanding brought me down deeper, darker rabbit holes that made me go, you see, I told you that's the way things really are. Mm -hmm. And we get lost in all this nonsense. And so if a person takes himself to a space of nothing, no thing, God is nothing. God is no thing. It's an infinite source of infinite potential to be whatever it wants. And when I fall into nothing, it doesn't require any effort. It's just right there. It's right there. And if you get in that, sh it's right there space and you start to stretch it. A deafening, profound silence will silently emerge within you, and suddenly the new world will appear. Mm. That's it. You, you, you graduate it. There's no other lesson. It's just being quiet on every possible level of your existence. So you can hear your soul speak to you and mm -hmm. say that you are loved beyond measure. Well, yeah. talk about light a person up when they come to that realization. Wow. Mm so good and there's levels to that too which is so awesome yeah right you know, it's like yeah. oh i can't go any deeper than you find out that, that man there's just levels and pockets and all it's of that. infinite man it's bliss miss mary right. bliss miss man it's just infinite levels of ecstasy and understanding and intuition and feeling protected and just feeling invincible with your parent. Isn't that what we want? Don't we want unity with divine parent? So when we want that beyond anything else, it becomes default, it becomes your breath unconsciously because you want it so much. Then this 
lotus flower, this phoenix, this Christ being born it rises in your life. In fact, you no longer see anything dark because everything around you becomes a paradise. It's here now, New Earth 2020. I think we're being shown it's time to make your choice, children. <laughs> mm-hmm. There was a wise philosopher who once said, God is a number that you cannot count to. It's like trying to search out the depths of, of what this thing is. It is everything and it is nothing, <laughs> you know, and experiencing God through everything, not, you know, and through the duality, man, there's a lot of like, I found peace in it. And I really, I feel it really feel like the mystic finds peace in duality, like in all of it, the light, the darkness, cause it's all one hero Israel. The Lord is one. It is all, all God. And God is always good. No matter what you're experiencing, it's it's only it's only momentarily, you know what I'm saying, in relationship to eternity, you know. Yeah, I love that you said uh, mysticism is found or whatever the master is found in yeah. duality because duality is how you find it because you got this one and then you got this one. No one realizes there's a third component. It's not this one, nor is it that one. It's the one you're not thinking about. It's because when one um, a teacher, or it's not a teacher, but a student, begins to juggle these two energies to realize these are just ideas. The center point is that which is the creator of everything. So it's not a this or it's a that. It's an everything. It's just an everything. And so how do we begin to understand that level of eternity and infinity? Don't try to. Just be quiet. Yeah. And you feel yourself just like a ripple, just go. And people say, well, there, what if there's an edge to the universe? Well, that's a conundrum because when you get to the edge, what lies beyond the outermost edge? You know, <laughs> it's a wall. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's a flat earth. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's. Uh, oh, wow. What is that? OK, somebody's calling me during the podcast. That's awesome. Um. Man, it's uh, it's beautiful, man. Just to be in that and, and talking about the the duality is, I like I like the fact that you said that there's three parts to it. There's the, you know, the right, and the left, or the good and the evil, the light and the dark, the positive, the negative. You don't have one without the other. They don't exist, right? Um, and they're both good. God is good, and um, but there's a middle passage too, and I think that that's where the light worker dwells again the mystic dwells is in this path of i'm not choosing sides like i am i am open to both sides like you know because like in religion we're like only all this or if we're against it and we're like rebellious we're like only all that you know the the years of adolescence and tearing up property and fighting and drunken revelry and you know all the the lowered nature things that most of us have kind of passed through and some of us still fight with today but there's a there's a piece right there in the middle and uh, I, I really do think that the middle there is what the bible and jesus talks about as being the narrow road it's right in the middle where um it, politics where's where, where's the beautiful spot with politics right or left it's in the middle like there's there's pros and cons on both sides. And for you to like choose a side because of religious affiliation or because of whatever. Who the, told the us we is. had to choose? Exactly. Never, <laughs> who made me have to choose anything yeah. of this? Yeah. And I love that the, the see uh, from a religious standpoint, people would say this kind of path may be dabbling in the dark. Well, somebody has to dabble in the dark because these people who are choosing to use that word, if that's what one needs to understand, dabble the dark. It's not like we're dabblers of the dark. Somebody has to go play in that territory, one, to help educate other people to understand what the hell that thing is. And it's, what are you gonna, and what are you going to do with it? How can, it basically you have to be like um, some sort of security. It's basically what it is, it protectors of the gate. It's just, you know, we're not dabbling in the dark. We have no interest in the nonsense that people bring out and whatever situations can happen in the world. Somebody has to be reconnaissance <laughs> to be the salvation yeah. army to go in there and say, you know, I'm a worker of the light. And I see from a different perspective. That's how I was 
hired for employment. And so my task is to come in here and look around and assess the situation. It's like, I'm not better than you. You know, I don't want to be a, a this person or that person having this particular job. That's your job. So when I need something from you, I'll go ask you. I don't assume anything. I don't use my opinion. I'll go ask someone who dabbles in an art and understands stands the balance of their craft. Yeah. This is what this is. Yeah. And so that's what light workers are. There are guides there to say, this is what's happening in my field of expertise. You can listen or not. Yeah. And it's not to say that there is no darkness or there is no bad stuff. Everything serves its purpose. And and it's there to teach you. You know what I'm saying? So I, I've been on both sides, right? I've been on the dark side and, and, and experienced the the um the psychopathy of that darkness and that, you know, crazy void of understanding of light of and it's scary and there's people there right they're listening to this there's there they're there but there's hope you know what i'm saying but to be one who's been on both sides to have dabbled in it again like you say uh and have made it out some people don't make it out that's why we have to talk about it i think that's why we talk about the light because we've been through the darkness and there's so much attention and it almost seems like for many people maybe we're just conditioned that that way but like the default is the darkness the default is failure the default is worry the default is dis-ease right all of these things and so we have to kind of bring that balance back to the force because it's counterbalanced like the the default because of society the leaders, whoever these people who have tapped into our life force has made it that way. And that's why we, we champion the light. That's why we talk about the beauty and mystery and awe and wonder of God, right? Because we know what we're doing just even through, I like to talk about being, um, practical and being, um, like mission minded in a conversation, being intentional in a conversation, because we know we're talking about the light, but just in a conversation, we're combating the darkness in the minds, in the subconscious of people, letting them know that there is hope. You've been told that there is no hope, like there's a way out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I love that you're talking about hope. Hope is a future experience. In fact, hope is such a beautiful, I love the quote from the Shawshank Redemption. Um, hope is a beautiful thing, probably the best of things, and nothing beautiful ever dies. So hope is not an expect, even in your hoping of a beautiful expectation of a future event, is the creating of it in and of itself. Just in the very hoping, I hope this happens. You're bringing forth an understanding, an idea of something futuristic. It's almost hard or challenging, could be challenging, to hope or paint an image in your mind of what you're actually hoping for, because it's, if it was seeable, you'd have created it. It's almost, almost out of our reach. Hope. I'm hoping that my fingers would get just a little longer so I can grab that thing and bring it into my experience. So that that's what hope is. But I think hope is probably starting to flood the world. People are living in hope. People, I personally see, Derek, uh, I'm sure you do as well. The world changing. I see it already change. Yeah. Now I see a possible, not a possible, I'm not going to call you a word. I see this, the great split. The masses are dividing and so much so, I don't only see the left and the right, and I don't mean political, just the left and right of things but also the little bits. Everyone's going to start grouping up. I don't mean segregation. That's not what I mean. Birds of a feather flock together is really going to seriously start to become, come into play. People are caught up in this nonsense. They're going to get in that loop and they're going to go at each other and they won't be able to get out. And no matter what anybody says, in the same group, same group, same group, same group, same group. Um, five years, this next five years is going to be right for all of us. Yeah, Um I'm definitely seeing that. I'm seeing when people go against that flock mentality, when people are embracing diversity and choosing love in the midst of diversity and, and knowing our differences, acknowledging them and not making a big deal over it. Because like 
you know what I'm saying, not majoring in the minors, the minor things that makes us different, because it's always going to be there. There's no way. Um, but I found a peace and a, uh, a beauty of God, of Christ, to be present in the midst of diversity. Because in the past, especially with religion uh, or politics, right, it's like, okay, if you, you can't even state what you believe or what side you or a truth that, that's beautiful to you because there's that thinking there that um, – you're going to be shamed for what you believe. You're going to, uh, people are going to choose the opposite. Right. Um, but I'm, but I'm seeing a beauty and diversity, man. Religious is like, Oh, you don't agree with this. Okay. We can't talk with you. You can't play. You're not invited to our parties. You know what I'm saying? But now there's a beauty and just seeing, man, people come together with different beliefs, different backgrounds. And let's just come together. Let us reason as the scripture says. And I want to, I want to point out two scriptures before we get too far away from this, the, the hope thing that there's two scriptures that come to mind. Proverbs thirteen twelve, hope makes the heart sick. Hope, I'm sorry. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. And then Jeremiah 29, 11, which is a popular one which says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Like those are promises. I, uh, for me, those are universal laws. They're not maybes. They're not maybes. There's like, there's a, a creative, Tell intelligent, me. whether people want to down and bash religion or say it's elementary or I've transcended, like there's some beautiful things there for me that the way my mind works and they, they've become my universal laws that there's a creative force out there that wants to bless me that want that is making sure that all things work together for my good right to making sure that i ch as i choose love i'm rewarded as i learn from my re my lessons i'm able to graduate and move to the higher levels in the spirit like to understand this cre this creative power uh through through faith and you know faith is uh the substance of things hoped for there's that hope again and faith and to believe it but uh, the, there's a difference there because religion sells you hope they want you to keep hoping keep coming back next week they want you to so that keep giving you something that you never attain you keep hoping every week there's a difference when we get into the universal law and the laws of manifestation how do i embody this hope how does it become ecstasy the spiritual joy how does it become peace that surpasses all understanding so there's these things that we can do the bible talks about walking in the spirit so that you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh that we can walk daily in the spirit and walk in that spiritual ecstasy, peace that nobody can take away because they didn't give it, comes directly from God, the Father, Source, whatever you want to call it. This is what we're teaching people, and this is the beauty of the work that we're doing. I love it. You can walk in the spirit, or you can lust in the body flesh. But it's okay if you lust in the body flesh. It's okay. You're just <laughs> not going to attain what everybody else has been shouting about that exists when you let go and you connect to the river of life. Yeah. That's the only difference. That's the only difference. There's no punishment. You're just going to just take on self-induced situations. That's ultimately regardless. In fact, you have, you have no control. You re your only free will is to choose to get into the current consciously or not. You have no other choice because when you get into the river consciously, you just put the oars down and the river just merrily, merrily, merrily takes you to the cosmic shore of ever-ending bliss. Never ending bliss. Yeah. But when you stand firm in something that is, you just have no, con and the river's moving against you like a stone, you become the rapids. You create rapids and trouble. Nothing you want is upstream. <laughs> Nothing you want is upstream. Everything you want is downstream. And that's being in the flow. Some people use Christianity. Some people love their children immensely. Some people love to listen to beautiful sonnets. Some people write poetry. Some people like Derek writes these amazing books and has this amazing room he's sitting in and amazing covers on his on his shirt and on, on, on his books and he's got this new shirt dude that's that's <laughs> passion to me god is fire god is illumined you know moses the burning bush we all oh, yeah. see fire god is a consuming fire yeah. the yes, lord is a sun can, and a shield yeah there you go s-u-n s-o-n yep. exactly and it's fire you want you turn your passion and your sincerity and your humility and your vulnerability if you put those four things you will not be the same person passion is the roll up your sleeves right get your fingers dirty get in there and make a sandwich sincerity is i really mean it i'm serious 
humility is softening yourself up to the world and to allow it to be. And your vulnerability is opening up your core and exposing your light. When you put those four into practice. <laughs> yeah. Happy I'm with you. it, bro. I mean, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm going to go further. You know, I keep going back to the scriptures on you, but yeah, come there, on. There, and, but there's some principles there for me, you know, and it, but it just, it, it explains what you said <laughs> to me, but the Bible talks about when we step into his, his courts, when we want to get into the presence of God, it talks about peace, be still and know that I am God. So there's a stillness and a knowing the Bible talks about waiting what those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. They shall walk and not grow weary. They shall run and not faint. And there's a promise there. And then it says when we go into the courts of God that we enter in with thanksgiving and with praise and understanding going into that. I start everything with that. I mean, that's the, the gratitude of of every day. It needs to be. Now there's the days that we miss it, we got to we got to find it. It's 2020, it's time to find it. Find that gratitude, that praise, enter into the presence of God. Well, I don't have nothing to be thankful for. I'm not where I want to be. I don't feel connected anymore. I don't do that. Look, start there. Sit in, sit in silence. Be thankful. Thankful for what? My breath. Taking a deep breath. Your heartbeat. Your life, creativity, hope. And embody it, speak it, manifest it, speak it into existence. Those, be, the beauty of the now moment, which is fleeting, but it's, but it's always there. Like the world is trying to pull us away from it. But that's where the power of creativity and everything is from the now moment. We're um, 47 minutes into this podcast. Time is, or our, our measurement of time is always moving. We've created, we can't yeah. go back, right? But it's there. We're mindful of every moment, which becomes uh, something that we can look back on, you know, and wanting to create beautiful things to create a category, uh, you know, what I'm saying like a library of of books, of podcasts, of music and stuff. It all starts with birthing it out of the now moment in in this sacred place, man. And it's so beautiful and everybody can get back there. And that's what I'm encouraging people to do for 2020. Like I'm doing it myself. There's some things where we all get off and some things we need to kind of get back on track. And I think 2020, this, you know what I'm saying? This new year is a perfect time to do it. It's a perfect time where everyone's shifting, starting resolutions and, and, and they have hope for a future. And how do we bring it into the now moment? How do we manifest it? And I think 2020 is a, a great uh, place to start, man. I love it. And, you know, this new book is going to be released. July 31st, 2020, Worldwide Distribution. Thank you, Gavin Lee Davies of Six Books Publishing. And it's exactly what you said. Crossing the bridge to the soul. How do you cross the bridge to the soul? If you're thinking that there's a how to do it, you've already missed it. That's kind of the point. Because we have to undo or stop doing what we've always done to try to get somewhere we can't get to. So we have to stop reassess or don't do anything just sit in the stillness there's nothing else to do you want to be in eternity you want to experience your divine parent for eternity you have to learn to be able to hear it you have to learn to be able to see it you have to have a relationship with it on every possible level level to fully amalgamate so much so that you lose every fiber of what you think you are or ever could be or what you think is real, blasphemous, holy, that all gets shattered in, in the presence of God, all of it. Yeah. Nothing exists in the presence of God except this explosion, implosion of light and infinite possibility and knowledge as it turns within itself. It was never created, never going to end. You begin to dive into these kinds of ideas and understandings and yearnings for yourself. And spirit will begin to shovel spoons full of love and light into your mouth, and you will have your spiritual man. And next thing you know, you don't care about anything except just being blissful. Just joyful. Whatever that is for me, I just want it. Yeah. I'm not interested in anything else. I'm no. with you. <laughs> I'm with you. And I, and a lot of people are getting ready for that. There's a lot of memes for 2020 about uh, leaving right? all the 
foolishness behind cutting off those people, those ideas, those things that don't serve you, you know, the leeches in your life, you know, things like that. And I think that's healthy, man. And I think that uh, moving forward, that's uh, it's it's going to be good. I'm, I'm excited. I got so much stuff even already planned for the beginning of 2020, you know, and some things that that I'm going to create and I'm already stepping into new territory. And I encourage everyone to do that. Start that business, start that podcast, write that book, start that coaching business, start that healing business. You know what I'm saying? Do what you love, man. I I feel like, you know, it's debatable whether reincarnation, I get to come back and try it again seven, seven times, man. Look, seize the day. Do it today. Create it today. Choose this day who you will serve. You have the power of life and death within your tongue to speak life to anything that your heart can imagine and choose that. That's a that's a uh, that's a privilege. That's part of your godhood. The little God created in the likeness and image of your father who spoke everything into existence with the breath, the same breath that we breathe. And we all share that animates all life. It's within us all. That's powerful. Know that. Take that into prayer. Don't enter into prayer like a beggar. Please, God, please give me a morsel of bread. No, come in as a son who is a son and a daughter and a child of the king, man. Command things, bind on heaven, uh, bind in heaven, loose on earth, whatsoever you do, whatsoever you you say that you, you have it. If you believe it in prayer, you have not because you ask not. Try it. You ain't tried it. And you gave up because it wasn't instant. Sometimes it's always, as long as the earth is here, you're always going to have seed time and harvest. It's always going to be a process that you have to, you, first you have to till the ground. You got to till up the ground and you got to get the ground ready to put the seed in. Then when you put the seed in, you got to cover it. Then you got to water it and you got to make sure it gets proper sunlight. Then you got to pull the weeds out, the leeches that come in, the people the, the, who got their hands out, who ain't contributed nothing. You know what I'm saying? You have to do that. And all of that comes into the manifestation process. It's as spiritual as you want to get, but it comes back down to being practical at the same time. And you can have anything That's that you want That's the magic. Desires. You said it is as spiritual as you want to get. That is a slogan. It is as spirit. That's a shirt, bro. It is as <laughs> real as you want yeah. it to be. It is as spiritual as you get. Yeah, well, I already have a shirt that says transcend the physical, spiritual individual. So it's kind of similar. Oh, I like the singing of it, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's oh, yeah. got some cadence, some silver. got a whole song. Oh, the whole song is on that on that ah. cadence. You should check it out. It's called Mystic Mind. Yeah. Um, Put it on my wall. For sure. Um, yeah. But I want to I want to, to make sure we touched on this because I don't know if you know you might know but I think we're connected a little bit closer. Um, I was born in Homa, Homa, Louisiana, and uh, I actually grew up uh, my childhood in Bayou Gosh, right down the road from you, in the swamp with the alligators. Man, uh uh-uh, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Went to daycare. Wow, bro, in, in, I, I did in, not in know that. I know there's I know that, where Bayou there's Gosh little, is, and there's that little tunnel. You got a little tunnel that goes through under the water in, in Homa. Real, real, it's, it's real narrow. It's still there. I was just there a couple of months ago. I went right through the tunnel. I'll tell you something that's and weird, And see, now though. that you told me that, now that you told me that, every time I go to Homa and I pass in the tunnel, I swear you're going to come in mine. Oh, yeah. i tell you Better something weird it. because, like, um, I was a child, though. I was I was little, right? Where I was going to daycare. I probably was anywhere from two to, to like, four years old. And... um. And, but then we moved after that to like Hammond, Springfield. Um, but like, I, I remember vaguely pieces of Homa and Bayou Gosh, right? Cause I was just a kid and they're fleeting memories, but they're still there. And I, I recently went back cause I was, uh, while I was driving for a living working and I had to make some deliveries over there and I ain't been there in like over, you know, 25 years, you know what I'm saying? Like 30 years probably. <laughs> I haven't been there in 30 years, but driving through Homa, like it was this weird experience because I it's like I knew it but I didn't know it. Like I remember some of the streets and some of the buildings and some of the the ditches and the stop signs and the daycares and like I remembered it and it was just a weird experience like weird deja vu because I was 5 years old and I'm 35 going back and it was just this weird experience of knowing it and uh, but not knowing it at the same time and then uh, we went and visited where I, uh, in Bayou Gosh, where I was, you know, a child at, and uh, see where I came from and took a picture, man. It's a, it was a, a shack on the bayou. Like, to see where I came from to where I am now and to where I'm going, like, I took a picture. And I'm going to get it printed out, but it's, if you look at it, the picture's on Instagram if you just want to scroll, but 
it's a it's a little beat up like termite infested shack that we used to live in man and it was so weird going back there visiting and like remembering where i came from man that's very cool i I didn't know that my friend you like the food (laughs) oh heck yeah yeah, my, when, when I got married, uh, my mom she wanted to uh, cook. She said, like, "Whatever you want, Derek, I'll cook. I'll cook you whatever you want for your for your wedding." I said, uh, "Bacon wrapped shrimp, <laughs> bacon wrapped shrimp." Yeah, that's what she made. I love me some seafood, man. I love seafood. Love it. Yeah, Louisiana's different, man. It's not. Yeah, it's not a part of the normal world. <laughs> <laughs> the The scenery is gorgeous. It, it the spirit there is it's strange it's 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 swampy it's i don't it's different man it is it just is whatever that is it is you know what that's like you know my study of of principalities and um territorial spirits if you will like going back and forth from louisiana to florida like as a kid a lot and uh, for vacation to see family crossing those state lines man there's a different feeling like the, everything's different, whether it's the way the trees look, the way the air smells, the people, the way they talk. Like there's a whole each state. There's something different ruling and controlling and the people are manifesting in those states. You can feel it, man. As a little kid, I've always like, man, this is this, I can always feel it. Everything looks different. People talk different. It's, it was weird. But understanding like principalities and powers over dominions, like over cities and, and countries and, and, and things it was in states it was very interesting uh, getting into that study have you looked into any of that at all no but I, I understand it I understand the uh, perspectives and the different viewpoints and the angles and how things if you were to like if you was to like zoom out like oh, over, some cities, over some cities over some cities you would see nothing but smog you know, you would see dead trees. Sure. You know what I'm saying? If you was to zoom out. Absolutely. And it would, but we're, we're like zoomed in. We're like down here with the people. But when you zoom out, it, <laughs> Sorry, it, it looks right. totally different. See, where I live here in Memphis, the next um, right down the street is the state line of North Mississippi. There's an imaginary line that's probably this thick that you can't see that you pass your car over. As soon as you pass your car over, they talk completely different. <laughs> the next one, you cross the Miss- Mississippi River Bridge, which I live right by Beer Street is West Memphis, Arkansas. They talk completely different. So the same thing is, believe it or not, the same thing is going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow, starting tomorrow, things are going to change. Don't be surprised if you wake up tomorrow and something feels different. Just explore it. Don't try to judge it. Just, just, just wow, this something feels different. And in that openness is a possibility waiting for a, a response from your parent because you said, what is this? Just feel right. And so it can be very off putting. I feel it all day. To, I've been feeling it since the day after Christmas. Many people are feeling it. I'm not saying doom and gloom fear based. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying factual based. I feel something. People feel something. If you feel something, it's likely going to be not what you have been used to. And it's going to take some getting used to, to feel comfortable like you used to so this is the energies that are being ushered in on 2020 one because you have a collective group of people hyper focused millions of people hundreds of millions of people knowing and thinking about well tomorrow is the second beginning of the second decade and this new millennium so all this mass power you have five people to build your house it'll take six months if you have 10 people to build your house, it takes three months. So when you have this group of people hyper fixed and focused on this idea that by midnight tonight, dong, something's going to shift, something is going to shift. And in this energy of being supported by spirit, reinforcing everyone to wake up or not, 2020, two doors, two, everyone's going to have the opportunity to either get on board the train or get left at the station. Yeah. The universe responds uh, to whatever you put out. So that's why I read scriptures like I do. The beautiful ones, the the, the beautiful quotes that, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 I create music that is going to bless people, right? I want to be blessed myself. Like I want peace myself. So I know if I create that for others, God, the universe is going to in turn give me peace. You know what I'm saying? How would you be if you're always creating 
uh, you know what I'm saying, diversity and discord among the brethren, but you but you're trying to walk in peace. Come on, like it doesn't work like that. It, the universe responds with yes and amen to whatever you put out. The spirit of expectancy or the placebo works the same way. Um, maybe we're feeling it. Maybe it's a supernatural shift. The universe is waiting. Our star brothers, the angels, they're waiting for us to catch up. You know, there's some things that we need to shed the, sh the shadow self to do the inner work, to ascend to the next levels and walk in it and, and to stay in it and to go beyond that. And so 2020, the, the energies are right. You know, the, 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 the um, you have permission again to do that stuff, to start the business, to 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 step out spiritual practices, taste and see that the Lord is good, that all of these things that we've been talking about are uh, at, at your disposal. You're not, you don't have to, God is not a respecter of persons. Again, that anybody can tap into that no matter where you are, no matter what situation that you're in. And, uh, it's beautiful. And I'm going to, I'm going to step in. I feel the energies. I feel the urgency. I feel the expectancy. My 2020, my January and February are like slam booked, you know, and, and there's new levels and new territory. So even in that, there's so much newness that of things I'm stepping into. You know, we talked about I have some spiritual retreats that we're booking. That's new. My first time like publicly doing that and have dates and first one's booked up. I'll already booking for the next one. Like I'm doing some two weddings the first two weekends of uh, of January. I'm scared to death, man. Dig it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going on a plane plane trip. Like my first plane ride, the first uh, second weekend in January. Like all of this newness, and there's so much more of create creating courses and things that I've still been grinding on and, and, and that nobody knows about, you know what I'm saying? I'm, and I'm excited because they're all new. I'm going to keep, keep doing the old stuff. If it's working, consistency is key. You want to keep doing what's working. You don't want to quit, you know, and abandon a jump ship. So music, meditations, you know, all that kind of stuff is, is con going to continue to come, but stepping into the newness with the expectancy of even more. Like I'm, I'm ready for the, you know what I'm saying? The, the new downloads and the new inspirations. Those are things that I already know, but God has some things in store that, that I don't know that he's going to show me and we're going to embody and manifest. And not just for me. I hope that encourages you because it's there for you guys too. It's there for everybody. I feel it. I feel, I feel the same thing. The door is open. The door is open. If we look at this on a new numerical scale and what vibrations of numbers mean. So those out there who may follow a different path, just hear me out. To support the very scripture you said is when you have January 1st, January 1st, 2020. So those numbers, when you deduce them down, they become a six. A six represents the ability to overcome difficulty. So whatever that's worth, a nugget of support. I truly see this as we have come to decision time. Individually, collectively, but and if any everyone takes care of themselves first, all ends are met. Yeah, there's nothing else to do. And um, I encourage people to to do it like right now. Those of you who are listening right now, live, take inventory. You know, again, the scripture says to to examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith. See if you still have hope. Examine yourself and see where you went wrong. Get it right, like right now, because I feel like there's going to be like a slingshot for people who bring in the new year that way. Go ahead and do it. Don't wait, you know, do it now. But, and if you're listening to this after the fact, do it ASAP, examine yourself, man, uh, recalibrate, you know, sometimes like when you're playing video games and stuff and the controller gets all out of whack, you have to recalibrate the controller. Sometimes if the game messes up, you got to go push the reset button. You got to reset, man. You got to refocus and uh, and bring it into fruition. Like all of the things that God has promised you, all the new visions that you have for yourself 2020. I really feel like bringing in, in the new year is going to uh, have a significance into what we do moving forward. If you don't have a vision board, if you don't have goals that are written down, if you don't have dreams, write them down. Write them down. I usually don't talk about my plans. Like that's between me, my family, and God. I usually don't talk about this stuff. I like to execute. I don't like to kind of set people up who want to kind of stop what I'm doing or or send out negative energy and stuff. I usually just move in silence and just create it and here it is. But um you know, I've talked about some of the things that I have going on. I'm excited. And uh and I I just encourage you guys, man, write them down. Pull you out a notebook, a sheet of paper. This is what I want. 
And then as you write it down, you'll see God whispering in your ear. You say, I want this. He'll say, okay, this is how you get it. What the hell? Okay, I want that. Okay, this is how you get that. Give up your hatred. What? I'm not hatred. Yeah, you are. You ha- you harbor bitterness towards your father. What? Like, go do do the do the work, man. Do the inner the inner journey. Write that stuff down. The Bible says, "My people perish for a lack of knowledge." It says, "Take the vision, write it down, make it plain, so that the hero may run with it. That you can run with it, because I can show you better than I can tell you." So I want to encourage everybody out there, man, no matter where you are, 2020, uh, 2021, wherever you are listening to this, because, uh, you know, the, the principles, the universal law, it's there. God is not a respecter of persons, man. It's so beautiful. Amen. <laughs> I love I love being in your space, bro. I, I it just you ooze it because you. You're not trying to recite your you it well springs inside of you. And you just pour it out just simply like a fountain. You don't you don't push it out. You sing it out. I, I see that. That's really, really <laughs> unique, bro. I mean, I see that in some people, but it's good to see someone else in that for sure. For sure, man. Well, bro, I, I really uh appreciate this uh this conversation. I think it was a good one going in into twenty twenty. Yeah. Uh talking about the energy, you know, the the shifting, the timing, the positioning. You know, where we are, how we got here and and how to move forward. Not just going to sell you a hope, but it's going to, hey, this is how you embody it. These are principles that work for anybody. The system works if you work it. Any of them. You got to work them. You got to work it. Let people know where they can follow your work at, man. You go live. You have your radio show, which is awesome. You have some beautiful guests on. Really cool presentation that you bring to the table uh, on your Facebook and stuff. The new book is coming out. Let people know where they can uh, check out your work, man. Thank you, Derek. Bro, I had a great time. I'd love to do it again. You're welcome on my show anytime. You can find more about me at youtube.com slash center of light radio. YouTube.com center of light radio. Uh, things, the wheels are there beginning to move. You can find me at center of light radio.com or Keith Anthony Blanchard on Facebook. I do presentations. I'm doing a presentation tonight called Deep into the Rabbit Hole. My one on my one-off just me and myself doing a presentation with the audience. I often go into what I call vessel mode or spirit mode. And I move what I know as a little bit as Keith out the way kind of idea. Uh, they always off the cuff. They bring me a lot of joy and hope in return. Like Derek, they massage other people's spirit as well. Um, I do center of light radio on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 7 PM. I have wonderful guests, people who walk the talk. I'm here to empower people. I'm always here. I love people. People are my life. It's the way it should be. I, I, in fact, there's no way I can stop this train. <laughs> Thank you, bro. God bless you. That's Happy awesome, New Year, man. everyone. Yeah, man. Thanks for hanging out again. Y'all y'all go check it out and look for the uh, episode that we did together because I was able to open up and talk yeah. about the book and religion and spirituality and all that kind of stuff so make sure y'all go find the episode that we did on his channel as well keith uh man awesome brother uh and i'm sure we're going to connect more moving forward 2020 brother big things ahead signing out shalom brother peace Living the light. <laughs> love you peace love and light keith blanchard ladies and gentlemen center of light radio Good stuff, man. 2020, I I hope that maybe even listening to this, that there was some um, expectancy that was imparted to you, that there's some uh, loose ends that need to be tied up. But uh, just moving forward with awe and wonder of God, of reality and uh, the way things are for you and start that business. Look, start that career, start that ministry, start that coaching business. You went through a lot of stuff, man. There are people who like how much is that worth? How much is it worth for your destiny to, to step out, man? Put it in a book. People would support you. First of all, if you're in my community, I'm going to support you because you supported me. That would be silly for me not to support you. If you put a book out, I'm going to buy it. If you put out a teaching, I'm going to listen. Like, come on now. It's, this is what it is. And, and as long as you've been supporting, supporting people, the universe is going to make sure that you have support. I talk about it all the time, like um, 
you ain't never supported nobody, but then you're asking or begging for support. It don't work like that. You got to put in on this, but it's there for you. Um, I want to say a thank you, man. We got a um, a gift yesterday from a, a random person who sent it to my house. I uh, got an Amazon guy come over and dropped off a big old package. It got a big uh, juicer. Somebody ordered me a juicer from Amazon, sent it to my house, and um, uh, found out who it was by asking a couple of people around, and it was my friend Brett Stacy. So... Thank you, Brett, for uh, thinking of us and blessing us with this uh, holiday gift or New uh, New Year's gift because uh, trying to get back health in order and start juicing and things like that. So thank you so much for thinking of uh, me and the family. And we'll we'll probably do a video uh, posting some of the rest of recipes that we come up with. And so I, I already have a ninja and I like to drink green smoothies and stuff, but I think it'll come in handy for me because uh, I, I like ginger smoothies as well, like. I don't like the taste, but I like the feeling. I like what it does to the body. The body, my, my body thanks me, and my body uh, likes it and thanks me with energy. I can feel it, like I feel high after I drink something like that. That's really good. My body's just um, longing for it. So, the ginger smoothies, the pulp, uh, you can't get it out. Like I can blend all kind of stuff. I can, you know, bananas and. Uh, any types of fruit and, and vegetables, I can blend that and drink it and it, it's fine. But there's something about the ginger texture that's almost like stringy. It's almost like string, stringy. Uh, John Santiago Ross says that ginger <laughs> drink you made me that one time, LOL. Exactly, man. I made, I remember that. We made one that, that morning. and uh, But you can't, you have to like, the ginger's, the, the, the pulp is going to be in there. But I think the juicer gets all the pulp out. So I think it'd be a lot easier to drink some of those uh, hard to drink drinks. And my, my wife doesn't like the texture of, of the uh, the smoothies that I make. So it's going to bless her too. So thank you so much, uh, Brett, and everybody else who uh, came and, and spent the holidays with us. We had our uh, annual Christmas party. We do Dirty Santa hangout. And uh, we had a bunch of people come in. Joshua Fluman drove in. Um, Christy came in and just a bunch of friends hanging out with Chris and Nicole bars um, enjoyed hanging out with everybody for Christmas and we just had a we just had a blessed time as a family and really in, enjoyed it so and I hope you guys had a, a blessed Christmas blessed holiday moving forward in the new year as well I'm gonna read some of these uh, comments here if anybody has any questions or comments I'll try to read them uh, Padawan talks about um, in my the, the first plane trip that I'm gonna do he says when you fly bring a camera phone with you and do a prayer for a UFO sighting. And if you see one out of your window, record. That'd be awesome, man, right? The watchers uh, be able to uh, see them up that close. We were, we were stargazing last night, man, because I know the uh, we just had a new moon here on the 26th, but it's been overcast every every night with, with clouds, cloud coverage, and we haven't been able to go stargaze, and I was looking forward to it. But uh, went out last night, a couple of days later and got to see a lot of stars and did some uh, stargazing and, and praying and seen a beautiful shooting star, you know, wandering star. It was cool. Um, Padawan says, if you're going to juice every day, make sure to take fiber supplement as well. Yeah, I don't think I'll I don't I don't think I'll overdo it with that because, uh, like I said, I do I do like using the ninja and, and uh, getting some of the. Uh, um pulp and things like that as well um sin senna sin senna says uh owns a level seven playlist on spotify god lucifer account add me on there man heck yeah and also says your music is teaching thousand plus members of other communities wow thank you i have to go follow it um it says are you going to collab with kanye or the rapper seven who knows? Never say never. Justin Bieber taught me that. Um, I've tried to do do some. We were supposed to do. A, <laughs> we were supposed to do a, 
a track with Seven before he uh, quit rapping. So Seven's kind of retired from music right now. He's kind of raising some other people up under his ministry and pushing his brother and some other people like that. And he's doing more of the um, administrative side to ministry and outreach and, and writing and stuff like that. So um, Seven's not really doing anything at the moment, but I was supposed to have a song with him. Um, I, I, I built Seven's website and um, he charges a pretty penny for, for features. I think it's like 700 bucks. Um, but um, I did his website and so it was either pay me in cash or trade out a feature. And I almost did a feature, but I was like, nah, I need the cash, man. So I ended up uh, just getting the cash for the website. But if you go to Seven's website, hogmob.com, um, I actually built his website and uh, him, Pyrex, uh, a bunch of other uh, big name Christian rappers, I, I built their website. So if anybody needs a website, hit me up for the Lolo. But yeah, Seven's a good brother. Called me, called me other day, other day, and um, <laughs> he called me out the other day. I guess I'll talk about it. Uh, so Seven, since we're kind of linked together on the website um, tip or whatever, sometimes people uh, find my work because of typing in Seven because I interviewed him and it's kind of up there on the search history in Google. So uh, people will find my work, and uh, we Seven hit me up. He's like, "Hey, bro, do you got a?" Uh, uh, um, a podcast on your on your page teaching people how to find a psychic. I was like, well, I did a uh, I did an interview with the lady and and we talked about how to find a psychic. He was like, I'm trying to I'm trying to really uh, get to the bottom of it because some people said that they seen it on my website. I was like, no, they it's not on your website. I was like, I think they uh, they might have Googled your name or seen it on YouTube and found it. But he was asking me about the uh, the it is so funny because like that's the only i didn't know what to name the episode and we we're talking about different um psychics and some of the shills and some of the weird stuff that you have to put up and deal with when it comes to uh looking for psychics or spiritual healers or leaders or whatever and we just did a whole episode just kind of running through some of the the funny stuff that people deal with and i just i didn't know what to name in the episode so i named it how to find a psychic and it was going through just all the weird silly stuff and and uh and and that was the first thing that someone seen um uh looking up seven and going to my website and seeing that episode, how to find a psychic and then seeing, thinking that he was related, but he actually said that some people were, uh, going to book him and his, his group out for a church, a ministry. And, uh, and they seen my website and how to find a psychic and thought he was connected. And they said they wasn't going to book him because we were connected. See, that's how church folks are. Now, why don't fool with church folks? I fool with people. I fool with church folks. They, that's how they are. They like to car compartmentalize. They put people and things in a box. Okay, you're the new age Christian guy. Okay, you're the black Christian that goes to the white church. Okay, you go to a black church. Oh, you're a Muslim. Okay. And they already have these weird compartmentalized and they try to figure you out. And, and they've already got you labeled and, and, and got preconceived notions and all of these things before they even meet you. So... You know, Seven missed some ministry opportunities because he was linked to me. So I went ahead and made sure that, like, I cleaned up some things that wouldn't, like, put my name on stuff. Because people be Googling things like that and all of that kind of stuff. So I made sure that I just kind of uh, tried to fix that up for him because I don't want him losing money or ministry opportunities because of me. But Seven on everything is a really, a really good brother, man. That guy, he is he's genuine. He's legit. Um good dude most people in the past would have just kind of written me off or whatever for something like that from the church realm but seven you know he he made sure he called me say hey man what's going on with this blah blah blah, blah. and i got to explain to him and uh and, to, and what i believe in 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 that specific episode and uh if the person listened to the episode they might would have found out what it was talking about but they they don't do that so anyway shout out to seven and hog mob because uh you know they run with some really cool people so um, shout out to everybody hanging out with us in chat. Got Deborah Fleck here. Uh, Jessica, how are you, my friend? Um, let's see on, that's on Facebook. Everybody's listening on YouTube, uh, Periscope. I quit streaming on Twitch. I get, just get too many, uh, trolls, man. There's some dude trying to call in last week when I opened up the phone line from Twitch and he was just trolling, man. I can't stand the trolls. I don't have a call screener. 
you know, so I just take calls and yeah. Oh, well. Sin Senna, Jonathan Santiago, Ali Graham, Tia Lempris, Chris Garner, Padawan, uh, Christy Folks or Christy Johnson, uh, Brandon Higgins, uh, Wendy Williams, Wild Things, just going through some of these names, James Bond. It looks like you got banned by the moderators for being bad. So shout out to you. <laughs> uh, you know, shout out to everybody hanging out. Um, got to be good. The, like, the mods will get you, man. They ain't gonna let you get away with anything. So, um, let's see. Since then, I feel that truth. What what you said about people knowing you before you go somewhere, man, that's crazy, bro. That's been crazy on so many levels. Like when I was a little kid, I say little kid when I was a teenager, man. Like that was like the biggest thing for me. Like that kind of like when I was experiencing schizophrenia as a teenager, like that that played a huge part because literally, um people knew me that I didn't know like once you have a name or a persona that kind of goes beyond you um people talk about you and people know you that you don't know uh, when I was a teenager it, it first started there because I was big into Marilyn Manson and the gothic I mean I shaved my eyebrows wore makeup painted my nails wore girl clothing like we were really big into the gothic freak stuff or whatever and um I got a lot of attention um you know, a lot of saying things and, uh, you know, for, for attention and, uh, getting in satanic stuff and being in Alabama and Louisiana, uh, offended a lot of people. And, um, I remember going to, uh, one of the churches we used to go to, we we're, uh, hanging out the window, uh, playing Manson really loud, just doing circles around the church and the pastor, he's preaching on a Wednesday night. He comes running out screaming, don't you ever come back here? <laughs> it's like, you know what I'm saying? And like had a reputation that preceded me even as a teenager. And, and it was weird because I would go to, well, there, there was one kid at school and he was like, Hey man, I want to let you know that the the whole football team, like they're talking about jumping you at the end of the semester. So they won't, you know, get suspended or whatever. They, they're talking about jumping you. And I'm like, the whole football team? That's crazy. And then I would have random people, whether it was at school or out in the community, at the park, um, in Walmart, different places, people would come up to me and follow me. Like, I was a freshman or seniors coming up to me trying to fight me. And, like, I don't even know who these people are, but they know me. And I was like, oh, wow. So it started to mess with me a little bit that, like, being in public and having people follow me down every aisle, I'm, like, you know, trying to figure out who these people are. And then they're, like, you know, you know, cursing me out or whatever, trying to fight me. And um, so that was when I was a teenager. And then, you know, now it's not as bad, but it, it was, especially coming out when I was a big name in the Christian community being a Christian rapper and a minister and things like that. Um, I would meet people. And uh, especially when I started to transition from Christian music and Christian ministry into whatever I'm doing now, being more spiritual, being more rounded, being into philosophy and things like that. Um, people would demonize me from the community and the churches and pastors would do sermons t targeting me and just weird stuff, man. So I would meet people and they say, oh, you're a true seeker. And I'm like, I don't know who they are. And I have to figure out like how they know me. Did Were they a fan of my early music? Did their pastor tell them to watch out for me? Did whoever told them about me? And so I said, how do you know about me? And I said, oh, I, I know so-and-so. It's like, oh, okay, you think I'm a witch. Okay. And I would... You say, oh, I know you because I've seen you at this concert. Okay, now you you like my music. You know what I'm saying? Trying to figure out how these people were, how they knew me because they were so polarizing in the church. Like, you know, we're praying for you, man, or whatever the case is. They see you as a threat. It was really weird, man. It would kind of mess with your head, like going to different cities and meeting people. Even recently, man, I went to, I was cause I, probably because I was at a church gathering, I went to a, a church conference in Pensacola, and I talked about this before. But this guy was staring at me like it was a huge conference, thousands of people. And uh, this guy was looking at me. And I was like, he looked familiar. And I didn't want to like look at him and like not say hello if I knew who it was. But like, I was like, it's going to be awkward. So like, Dude, he look he looks like this guy on Facebook, <laughs> but it wasn't him. So I go and I go and sit down and the guy walks up to me and says, hey, man, 
you truth seeker? He's like, yeah, man. So I got to figure out there again, like, how do you know me? Dude, I love your podcast. Oh my God. I listen to you. I listen to Kingdom Talks and everything, what you're doing, bro. It's just surreal. And he was like just blown away to meet me. And, uh, but at first I was like, okay, are you going to rebuke me? Are you going to pray for me? Like, you know, I'm at this church gathering, but it was, it was, it was awesome to, to meet somebody who was, uh, touched by the work, you know, and trying to get out of that mindset of like expecting people to not like you, you know what I'm saying? Or expecting people to, you know what I'm saying? Talk about you or expecting people to gossip about you. Um, it's fear, false evidence appearing real that it doesn't exist. And you create it as you believe in, I'm in living in this weird paranoia thinking that people are out to get me and, and things like that. And, and people can give a damn less And like years have passed by. That was, you know, 2011, 20, 2012, when all that stuff was really big for me and going through and making that transition and really uh, embodying who I am and the person that God has called me to be. That's for me, but it's also universalist for you like expecting these things and expecting that nobody's going to like me or I'm not going to make friends or I'm not going to do this. Or I'm 2020 is going to be the same as 2019 or I can't get nobody to co-sign. I can't get nobody to open the door for me. I can't get this. I can't get that. You got to do it yourself, man. You got to make your own lane and drive it and roll. Nobody's going to don't expect any handouts, not from people, you know, but from, from God and, and, and getting with God and, seeing how God wants to open those doors. He can open up, open up and close doors that no man can open. So, um, when it comes to that, don't, don't seek the approval of men. Don't seek the adoration and the applause of men. It's fleeting. It's intoxicating. Seek the approval of God in all things that you do. Examine yourself every day to make sure that you're in the faith. Make sure that you, uh, are doing good in, in, in the earth and you're not contributing to hatred, violence, bigotry. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's you know, the mind is a powerful thing. All of this stuff comes out of the, of, of, of the mind of the imagination. It's how God created all of this was through his imagination. And we have the mind of Christ. We have the same mind. So renew your thoughts daily, man, and uh, make sure that you're contributing <clears throat> to the betterment of this place. Leave it a little bit better than the way that you found it. Padawan says, uh, that's just because people want something, someone docile to take out their anger on because they didn't overcome the devil. Yep. They got overtook. You were probably an overcomer. They saw it subconsciously. Jealousy. Dude, you're hundred percent right. Like, uh, you represent, I represent different things to different people. We, we all do, but, uh, you represent freedom. Oh, uh, you, you, you can freely do things without judgment that other people could never do. There's a freedom that you found and, and, and you intimidate that other person because whether they're convicted or whether they they don't have a freedom in their life, whether it's financially is a big one, religiously, philosophically, um, but you have a freedom and it, it, it's a threat to them. It makes them feel inferior because how free you are. You know what I'm saying? But but yeah, don't don't let them uh, take that out on you. And again, they want a whipping boy. They need a scapegoat. We all do. You know, for the Christian is Christ is a scapegoat, you know, um, just just thinking about how um, I mean, Marilyn Manson had a, a awesome song about it called uh, Tourniquet. Take your hatred out on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me carry your your hatred you know let me carry the uh let, let me be your excuse and the weird thing is he did music about that and he became that he created that he did songs about being the tourniquet being the, the whipping boy and being the you can blame me for all the bad is that come on can we blame marilyn manson one man for all the come on dude an entertainer you know a protagonist like but it happened columbine happened who they blame? George Bush? No. They blame Marilyn Manson, a freaking rock star. It's crazy. He became that. He had the, the lyrics. He became it. They blamed him for all the bad in the world. Take your hatred out on me. Make your victim my head. You never, ever believed in me. I'm your tourniquet. 
and so many more songs about just being the whipping boy and being the, the blame and the victim. And he he created it. You know what I'm saying? Subconsciously. We all do it. Creating subconsciously. You're already a master manifester. You're already good at manifesting stuff, whatever you want. Only thing is you've been doing it subconsciously, passively, by default. And your your default is usually not renewed. It's not renewed. You got to renew your mind. You have to you have to become conscious. You have to become co-creators with God and just try it. Try it and see. I did it. I'm doing it. Everyone ahead of you who's like successful, they've done it. They've been focused. And your focus like goes away. I'm focused on the podcast tomorrow. I'm focused on being in a band. No, hold on. I started this podcast. I have to be faithful. I have to show up. Even when I don't want to. That's all of you. Whatever it is. Like, renew your passion for it. Whatever it takes. Because you started it. Don't dip out on it. See it through to the end. Finish something for once in your life. Damn it. Whatever it is. Padawan says, God is in the TV, Manson. Yeah, I hope you know that that quote that I said earlier. I don't know if you know it. Um, God is a number you cannot count to. So I don't know if you know who said that. I said it was a great philosopher. Um, Adam says, the blame game is sad. The game of lies. Yeah, we all blame others. But you find out that uh, you bring the power back when you take responsibility. Blame my mom. Blame. I didn't have a dad. You know how long, like, how long and how... I mean, I could probably even set into that now and it still would scare me and and what kind of truth is there. I didn't have a dad, so that's why I don't have this or that's why I don't do that or I don't have a work ethic. Or I don't, you know, you have these way to blame everybody for what you don't have. And you can look in and zoom in any of it and create the, the, uh, the links there, connect the dots, blaming people, blaming others, but take responsibility of it. You know, be what you didn't have to the younger version of yourself. This podcast is not for you guys. This podcast is for the younger version of myself. That's who I'm talking to. And then in the midst of that, I'm talking to you all. Just be that person that I needed. And that's all you need to do. Be the person that you needed for your kids, for your neighbors, for your family, for your community, for your spouse. The person that you needed, be it. There's a need there. Feel the need. When you needed it, they wasn't there. Feel the need and uh, you'll be successful. People will come from all over all over to support and to listen. What's up, Martin Smith? How are you, my brother? We need to do another show as well, man. I know I recently had you on, <clears throat> but I want to do another show with you, man. I hope uh, your event was good with uh, uh, Gil, man. I watched some of the live stream and your son, I know you've been talking about how, how much wisdom, you know, the younger generation has, man, but your son was dropping some good, good knowledge too, man. It's good stuff. Yeah. So I guess I'm gonna go ahead and jump off here. I want to bless everybody's 2020, man. <clears throat> uh, we talked about so much, so much, so much, so much, like it's up to you to embody it, to bring it into your reality, to manifest it. I'm not going to do it for you. I have some tools. I have some things that have helped me that I'm articulating and embodying. It's on the podcast. It's in my music. It's so much. It's in the book. All of that stuff, how to overcome the darkness, how to uh, live in, in, in peace with duality and find that that um, middle ground there. You know, all of that stuff's there. How to how to find victory in your spiritual life and your financial life. All of it, man. And I, I just want to help. I want to I want to get to the end and hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Like you did it. I didn't hide it from you. I didn't keep it for myself. You do, you got to do the work. I can't do it for you, though. It's for each and every one. But universal law, man, it, it's for everybody. It doesn't care. It's no respecter of persons. So I understand that. But uh, 2020 is coming up in a couple hours for me. And I'm um, pretty sure if you're listening to this on the podcasting apps, it's uh, 2020 is already here. You're already off to a great start. And if not, let's change that. I want to say a prayer for you guys. I want to pray us out. Haven't prayed on here in a while. I feel the anointing flowing. 
And uh, we're going to release some stuff. Father, I just thank you for your peace, Lord. I thank you for your love and for your grace. You know what? We got some music on here, too. Some tones and vibrations. Boom. Father, I thank you for your love and for your grace, God. I just ask you to just encounter people where they are. You know their dreams and their visions, their goals, their hang-ups, their shortcomings. You know it all. Fearfully and wonderfully made, Father, the, the, the course is, is scripted. You're the author and finisher of their faith. I just pray that they, as they draw closer to you, as they draw nigh unto you, Father, that you just draw close unto them. Speaking to the things in their life that are not as though they are, show them the power of their words. Show them the power of their faith. Show them the power of their belief, the power of their focus, God, and the power of your love that just transforms every situation. A universal peace that surpasses all understanding. Tangible, not a theory, but tangible in that now moment. Peace of God. Mm. Holy Ghost, I just ask you, Father, just to ignite hearts, Lord. Stir up hearts again with awe and wonder, the ability to dream again. New visions for 2020. New dreams, new goals, hope, and then how to execute it. How to execute. Give them visions. Teach them to write it down. And as they write it down, Father, I just pray you whisper it in the ear how to execute. Show them what it takes and let them count the cost. Count the cost. 2020 is worth it. Bless them, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. God, anybody sick in body, we just ask for healing right now. Anybody sick in their mind, Father, we ask for healing. Peace of God, sick in their body right now, mind, spirit right now, spiritual life, Father God. Let them do the inner work to find that peace in every situation to acknowledge you and you will direct their path no matter what it is no matter what the obstacle is just to say father where are you in this examine it father where are you in this god where are you in this whether it's in the peace of the stillness of the silence father where are you in the silence Father, where are you in this storm? And you find yourself like the disciples on the boat in the midst of the storm. Where's Jesus? He's, pe he's in peace. He's sleeping on the boat. Peace. Father, I pray that your peace will be extended to us in the midst of all of this stuff. The chaos, the confusion, the politics. Peace of God right now. Whoever's listening that needs it, just needs a fresh touch, top of their head to the soles of their feet. Take a deep breath in through the nostrils. Peace of God. Exhale through the mouth. Good, good. Do it again. In through the nostrils. Peace. Release through the mouth. Mm, Holy Spirit. Now this next breath, we're going to do one more. And you just continue it as you want. Take it with you. But as you breathe in, I want you to acknowledge the peace and presence of God, literally the Holy Spirit, which is the breath, the, the pneuma, the ruach. As you breathe in, you can feel at the top of the breath, you're going to feel a tingle. It's the Holy Spirit just letting you know, hey, I'm here. I'm your peace. Ready, set, breathe in through the nostrils. Release. <sighs> Holy Spirit. So activate more and more and more creative power, creative expression, the flow, the flow, the flow, fire, fire, fire right now. Help them live from the heart. Help them create from the heart. Peace be upon them, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Man, I'm excited for this new year. I hope you guys are too. Get with me. Our Discord is available. If you want to hang out after the podcast, we'll jump into the Discord uh, section for a little bit. A bunch of stuff that we're creating uh, for 2020. Peace be upon you, my friends. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. God bless. Have a book, product, or service you'd like to promote? Yeah. Look no further. 
Ad slots and commercials are now available for you to get the word out about what you do on the Truth Seeker Podcast. We give you what you need. Get it. Engage the spiritual community and get yourself instantly in front of thousands of listeners who explore the spiritual, paranormal, supernatural, religious, and metaphysical realms. Have your commercial inserted into our entire archive of episodes. That includes the one with Jordan Maxwell, James Gilliland, Dr. Michael Heiser, and that weird one with Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. Stop sleeping on yourself. Know your worth. Let's get the word out today about what you have to offer. Head on over to truthseeker.com and click on advertise for more info. Yo, That does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.